Uh, hey, good afternoon. My name is Adam Olson. I'm the MLA for Saanich North in the Islands. This is the 25th episode of the Public Circle Live. That would be the sil if we were married. Yeah. See, this is Richard Zussman. He's uh, Global TV. You've probably seen him around, probably more than me. Hello, Richard Zussman. Say hi, Richard. Hello, everyone. He's my special guest. We're in the uh, we're in the uh, in the in the leaf, the Nissan Leaf of the leader of the BC <laughs> Green Party. Oh, we got a low network connection. Of course we do, because everybody. Hold on a second here. See, this is such a high. When we do ours at Global, we never get low network connections. No, but well, this is the beauty guys, of the. You guys know what you're doing. The road. You guys know what you're doing, though. So Adam's trying, but we don't even know if we're, we're speaking out to you. Low network connection. Nope, there, we're back. We're back, we're back! Okay, so we are at the, let's tell people where we are. We're yeah. at the Swanson Ferry Terminal. We're on our way back from the UBCM, the Union of BC Municipalities. We got Richard Zisman in the car with us. We're sorry about the, uh, the technical glitches. There's a lot of people here, and they're probably all on uh, using the, the, the Wi-Fi and the... And the, so we could talk. We could start with the problem with the Wi-Fi at the ferries. I know that's a big issue. <laughs> Why are you doing enough more about that, Adam? Maybe I should be doing more about the Wi-Fi at the ferries. You, you do Facebook Lives a lot as a reporter. You're breaking into the new technology of the uh, of the of uh, the Facebook Live. In fact, we were just a few feet away from you when the the Premier John Horgan and his cabinet were being sworn in. And you were Facebooking live the the entire time, were you not? Yep, that was a, a cool experience. I think. Did you, you know, get a award for that? The, no, I no? got an award okay. for other stuff. We got okay. a good, great award last year for the work we did on the deal that you guys signed with the NDP. Right. Uh, but that day was uh, the day that John Horgan was sworn in. Uh, Sorry, I'll, I'm no, just. No, there's no, a new that's... special guest here. Yeah, we got we got another special An even guest. Even more here. special guest. Special guest is feeling really, really sick right now. So anyway, uh, we're live on Facebook, so right. So we're gonna let you guys talk. And I'm just gonna go here and just... Okay, Andrew Andrew Weaver's gonna go to sleep. That's Andrew Weaver, everybody. <laughs> Anyway, you were saying uh, before you were rudely interrupted by someone. Yeah, it was at Government House, and mm -hmm. there was so much interest, obviously, right. in what was happening. And we wanted uh, part of the job now, our job as journalists, is to get, you know, as much access as possible. And, and you know, I've told you this. What Adam does is really neat, that every week he makes himself available for you to watch and ask questions through Facebook. And yeah, um, we, you know, as Global Now, what we're doing is we're trying to get guys, you know, we've done a few with Andrew. Uh, we've done a few with Premier John Horgan. You know, our goal is to give you, the public, a chance to ask these people questions. We're lucky as journalists that we get a chance uh, to, to see these people every day, you know, ministers, leaders, and you know our job, and I, I take it very seriously, is to is to explain to you the decisions that they make and and what what they're doing uh, in Victoria. And so, part of why you know what what's important about my job is then giving you the opportunity at time to ask questions as well. So I was happy to do Adams, considering I hitched a ride with them from the UBCM. We were all up at Whistler. For me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's harder to get back from Whistler to Victoria than I originally thought. So I'm in a Nissan Leaf. Guys. In a Nissan Leaf, you actually have to stop. Hey, by the way, I think I've just broken a record. I now have 11 viewers. That's a new record. And before... No, I'm just kidding. So you got to answer but, the questions. Robert has a good question. Who's driving? Andrew Weaver was driving. That's me driving. Andrew Weaver was driving. And he apparently has With a lot of love. With that thing over my face the whole time. Because he's he's I didn't want to make them sick. Andrew's Andrew has been somewhat uh, coffee, coffee all the way down. Um, and, uh, and so we, we, we drove down in the Nissan Leaf and you actually have to stop and charge up. And thankfully the good people in Horseshoe Bay, yeah. actually it's BC Hydro put a fast charger there and, and now we're here, we're at the ferry. We're going to catch the five o'clock. My family's going to be uh, very, apparently we crack Robert up. Good. He's cracked this up. This is why we're here. That's exactly right. So, um, you did a, you did a, what was it? An hour and an hour and a yeah, half about, running commentary. At so the... I used to, when I, um, I went to Queens University and my first um, ex real, real experience in journalism was I worked at CITR, which is an incredible campus radio station, one of the best in the country. Yeah. Um, and I called the Queens football games and I loved calling sports. And since then I've done, I, I used to call UBC games for uh, right. 
CFRC or um, CITR I got them all mixed up now CITR is UBC CFRC is uh, Queens right and both amazing 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 campus radio stations two of the best uh, in the country and uh, so it was like calling a sports game but it was politicians I remember there's Adrian Dix you yeah. may remember him from the time that he was the leader of the NDP in 2013 he's now health minister he won decisively in his riding and I sort of had to whisper because <laughs> like as you said everyone was around us I would but it was a it was and a, I actually I think I was in the <laughs> I think I was a little chirpy chirpy that day and I, I could be heard in the background congratulate <laughs> you for, yeah. for what you were doing going oh yeah Richard only yeah. Richard's able to do what he's but you know what I started uh down a road in media, actually. Yeah. I don't know if you I, I know that. this. I do. I was at uh, at Camosun College, and this was in 2003-04, uh, in the uh, in the, the the infamous or the famous uh, applied communication program, and I the, with the goal of becoming the 2010 Olympic play-by-play -play commentator for which sport? Hockey. Yeah, hockey didn't happen. It ended up being what Cuthbert. Chris Cuthbert. Of course, the golden was, goal. There was not a chance that I was going to take Chris Cuthbert, out of it, but that was going to be the goal. It's, I, a good goal. Uh, it's good to set goals. That's right. And I worked with uh, I, I I worked with the Victoria Salmon Kings as their yeah. PR guy and as their community relations guy, and uh, I had a real dream of of doing sports play by play commentary. Maybe maybe once we're all done what we're doing here in in the legislature, we can uh, call sports together. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be a lot of fun. Because it, it is fun and. and there, there are a lot of comparisons between sports and politics, and uh, between sports and life. Yes, and politics and life. Hi, Tanya. Tanya remembers when I worked at the Victor uh, with the Victoria Salmon Kings. I want to, I want to go back here because I want to talk. Uh, Joe uh, Kunstler says that he wishes that I take transit, and uh, I think on our way back we were talking about the need for transit in the Lower Mainland. But we're, I do want to point out, Joe, uh, I was in Vancouver on Monday before the UBCM started and uh and i did i took um i took a bus company from vancouver up so i did it wasn't transit but it was a bus company because i didn't have my own vehicle up there and now we're uh now we've uh, hailed a ride with uh, the leader yeah. of the bc green party and i was gonna do that too joe I, you know i when i travel over uh to vancouver for work i, I try I, i've been really impressed with um, how they've now connected it. So if you get off the ferry, you can walk on a bus. They have that right. express bus basically timed out to get you to the Bridgeport station and then you can take the Sky Train in. But, you know. It's brilliant, so what actually. You, it's brilliant. You know, it's one of the files I don't, you know, the transportation critic. I do, it's one yeah. of the files you're working on. It's, it's one of the great challenges, I think, that faces, you know, many of our, the, the metropolitan areas in this province is that, the, the, they've grown so fast that the transit options just haven't been able to keep up with growth. Well, I, okay, so I, I also think that we have that, that we have to take a lot of responsibility, and that's how we as a politician, but we as individuals have to take a lot of responsibility for that. That we have to be more accepting, I think, of of taking those transit options when they're put there as well. I mean, we were seeing, and we were talking about this. Why not take the bus from from Delta into? Uh, you know, to the casino to get on to or into, yeah, you know, wherever it is. Bridgeport Station. Bridgeport yeah. Station. So, uh, you know, I think that part of what we have to do is, as, as government and part of what the responsibility that we have is to really talk about and educate the public on, uh, on not only the benefits, the personal benefits. I enjoy taking the, the transit when I can because it allows me to do the work that I can't do when I'm driving. Um, but, but a lot more education that, that we are way, way behind other jurisdictions around the world. And uh, I know that there's like this chicken and egg kind of conversation that is always going on. You know, do we we provide the transit ahead, and it and it slows down the decision making? We have to make the investments in it. I think that as well, the public is going to have to get used to taking transit. Yeah, let's and ride hailing is another part of that transit circle. We were talking about this oh, earlier. Man. Um, I'm about. Uh, to launch a podcast, a global news podcast that will come out in a few weeks with Keith Baldry. Yes, I'll uh, definitely. No, I'm just. And, and so, and one of the episodes cool. we're going to do at the beginning is around transit. So I did the interview yeah. with Transportation Minister Claire Trevena today, and right. I don't want to spoil too much of that. No, but, no. Um, Sneak preview yeah, here, like here it is. On people are going to be <laughs> Facebook's it's live. called the public circle. Um, but yeah, there are a lot. Like, I think you know, there's a lot of issues around ride hailing, and there is. The, 
like it's not available you here continue in this to process. apply pressure <laughs> Uh, to get it here because it is so crazy in a lot of people's uh, minds silly. why uh, Vancouver is the largest jurisdiction in North America that doesn't have it. Uh, it is one of the largest jurisdictions in the world that doesn't have it. Uh, we do have some unique challenges here in the province around the Passenger Transportation Safety Board and provincially run insurance, wow. but they are problems that could be easily solved and you know we're now looking at likely not till Christmas 2019 that we'll actually see ride hailing. Well, if you think about it, generally there's two legislative sessions a year, a spring session and a fall session. I know that the Liberals didn't always have the fall session, so like, I don't know the exact number of legislative sessions, I'll just guess 10 since uh, since you know the the emergence of, yeah, so of six years ago, I think is okay. So twelve, maybe yeah. ten sessions. Let's but, just but say, you don't right? Remember that Christy Clark only liked doing one session a year. Well, I do remember. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to say that even like, yeah. okay, eight. Yeah. Okay. okay, so there's been three sessions of the legislature. No, 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 no. With with all due respect to the former government to the current government, there's been lots of legislative opportunities to bring the package that we're going to see this coming fall in, and and I'll just say this. There is no reason why, once that legislative package is passed this fall, that we need to wait until September to start for to start accepting applications so for ride hailing you know, companies. You're in a position where you you can apply some of that pressure. Well, this is part of the pressure that I'm applying is to continually come out. I go out in the media and I say it. I go, I say it privately. There is no reason why we need to wait. Once that legislative package is done, let's start accepting applications. Let's get these. Uh, let's get these vehicles. Uh, let's make sure that we protect the safety of people. But let's get these people, these uh, these vehicles on the road and providing transportation options for people who need it. And as well, applying pressure to the current incumbent industry, the taxi industry, to in to ensure that they increase the quality of their service. Yeah. Which is the you know, it's not only access to tra uh, to uh, taxis that I hear is a problem, but as well the quality of service. Especially, uh, this is what I hear almost exclusively from the lower mainland, but they want yeah. the quality to increase. So that's what happens when you have competition. And the other issue, and, you know, we all live on the island, and I'm sure uh, most of you watching live on the island as well, um, or on Oh Spring no, I've got, Gulf Islands. I have, my audience is like well, their world, it's global audience. But anyway, uh, go ahead. But, but the, the crazy thing in Metro Vancouver <laughs> is this rule that you cannot <laughs> drop off. So right. um, if you're a cab company based in Surrey, you yes. can only pick up in Surrey. You can right. drop off anywhere, but you can't pick up in another jurisdiction. So you deadhead back to Surrey. So if you're going to Surrey and you're standing <coughs> in the corner in Vancouver and you see a Surrey cab, they're not allowed to pick you up. And you also have, uh, we're seeing more and more frequency of cab drivers refusing fares. Right. Uh, because they don't want to go out into the suburbs because they don't want to drive back. Like, well, why, I asked Claire like, would Trevena, you want? Minister Trevena yeah. about this and, and it right. took a while to get to the point that this is just not acceptable. Like it's... You're, yeah. you're, it's just not the way to treat passengers in any system that's you know regulated by the province. The province should not be accepting this. So, um, I think, I hope we see, you know, at least some pressure from the province on these cab companies to not allow these rules to continue as they as they try to figure out exactly how they're gonna uh, get into the modern world. Here. Do you see we've got an exclusive viewer just join us, Andrew Weaver? Is uh, just <laughs> <laughs> I think he's gonna. At any point now, he's going to drop a message on, and you can see his his head will will look in here. You know, to the <laughs> to the to the point uh, that Tanya Sunshine make. You know, T Tanya Sunshine made was that uh, she took uh, ride hailing in in Toronto for the first time in August, and it's brilliant. I can't see the rest of it. Um, the rest Everyone of the message. Was shocked, we don't have it here. Is right, what, is what I, my guess is going to be. I imagine, and that is like overwhelmingly the 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 uh, the so, response that I get and, and from I, people who've taken I've taken it when I'm in other cities and it was exactly as uh, as Tanya's it was brilliant and I asked Minister Trevena today if she'd ever tried it and I think you know it's one of those things it's just interesting to find she said she's tried it once and it was in Seattle and it was a short trip and she was there with um, her stepson and and his wife mm -hmm. and she said it was a short trip and I asked her did you feel safe because that's one of the issues right is the province right. keeps saying that they're trying to make it uh, safe and and I think that is hugely 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 important. Yes, it is. if there are going to be transit options, they need to be safe. And and she said, yeah, I guess I felt pretty safe. I think. I well, think that is our fact, responsibility. That is our responsibility yeah. as legislators is to ensure the safety of our people.
uh, no. to our, our constituents. Whoa, uh, we have so so we are going to start moving, as you yet, can see. You can drive. Yeah, yeah, okay. you drive. Now Andrew Weaver's blocking the line. He, he's one of those guys at the yeah. ferries that drives you crazy. You go, I'm just going to get. Please, I'm Adam just going to get the cameraman to uh, put a seatbelt on. Put a seatbelt on here. Hold on a sec here. This is the first time that we've gone live from a moving vehicle. I want to be very, vehicle. very clear. The driver's not paying any attention no. uh, to us. There we go. So, um, so, so tell yeah. them what you did at UBCM, because this was a pretty, you know, I think most people know what UBCM is all about. Uh, municipal leaders from across the province right. come. We were in Whistler this week. Journalists, uh, MLAs, local politicians, and it's an important week for you, I think, to, to meet with a lot of people and discuss issues. How did you Yeah, look, it? you know what, I don't get enough, I don't get enough of an opportunity to get around to the, uh, out into the province, and as you pointed out, I... I have a responsibility for a lot of files to keep an eye on a lot of files, and so you know there's transportation issues all across the province. There's uh, agricultural, you know, there, basically all of my files have got a provincial uh, uh, aspect to them as well. And so um, this is a good opportunity to connect with community leaders from around the province that I don't get to necessarily get to meet with. Uh, I know our our boardroom was full pretty much all week as people wanted to share with us their stories and. Uh, they're either their trials and tribulations with working with government uh, or the provincial government or things that they want us to, to know about so that we can then help uh, advocate on their behalf. And, and uh, I can tell you, like when I was the interim leader back between 2013 and 2017, uh, you know, we had to really scrape uh, to get meetings together. And now in the situation we're in, uh, we can have a full boardroom for the entire week that we're there. We had two. Um, we actually, we had two boardrooms. That's right. It's a little bit of a weird one, this one though, because of the the municipal election that's happening. Uh, that's happening. Is that breaking news? Well, oh, I just no, just, no it's uh, not. Oh, okay, too bad. Sometimes I get breaking news. Yeah, uh, no, it's a weird one because there's a municipal election, uh, you know, coming along, and uh, and you know who knows. The issues continue to roll though, and and you know we heard a lot about uh, housing, a lot about the work that I've been doing on the. Uh, Resident, uh, rental housing task force, a lot about the upcoming legislation around um, the tax policy, whether it be the uh, uh, speculation tax uh, or the uh, or the um, uh, the employer's health tax, which is uh, coming as well. Uh, a lot of stuff around that in my riding, that that um, the latter tax. So, uh, you know, we've got a challenging and uh, well, we've got a challenging legislative agenda coming up this fall. And if it wasn't challenging, then what kind of job would it be? Frankly, right. this is why I got into it is to is to debate and discuss the tough issues and to be challenged. And I and I look forward to that. Rental task force too that I know you're a part of is coming up. Uh, yep. Premier Horgan did a scrum today, and I asked him, or he was asked about it, not by me, by someone else, and he said we should expect it next week. I don't want to speak at it because you know stuff that I don't know. But publicly, Horgan said that that was coming. So. That's obviously an important piece so, of the work that you were doing at UBCM as well. Yeah, so every morning we got together, uh, uh, Spencer Shander Herbert, Ronna Ray Leonard and I got together, had, uh, had conversations about, uh, about the recommendations that we're going to make to government, and, uh, and clearly the 4.5% uh, the increase on renters has been tough, and uh, it's going to continue to be tough uh, for people, and so we have to, uh, we've, we're, we're sending a package of of recommendations because um, you know one of the things that we know is that when it comes to renters there's also landlords and we've got to create a balanced scenario for both because one of the unintended consequences of, of you know moving too far in one direction is that perhaps that we lose uh, rental housing stock and we don't want to do that that is not an unintended consequence that's acceptable so uh, it was they were tough conversations but I'm I'm really glad at how we worked together and how we worked um, uh, and coming up with some recommendations. So uh, be looking for them shortly as uh, I'm glad uh, Premier Horgan said it so that I didn't have to. <laughs> and Here we are. We're now in the ferry. We're as people in the can ferry see. now. So, yeah. so you can see our, our we lighting guy. Ferry policy. Our, What's your ferry policy? Our lighting person hasn't been able to keep up with, uh, with the changing uh, locations. But uh, anyway... Um, what uh i'm just tackling some work here i have to yeah yeah no that's problem that's no problem i'm you know i'm i'm glad I'm, that everyone and everyone can see so, that you're saying. So UBCM, no 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 so ubcm ferry so policy speculation tax was a big thing that came up this week at uh, ubcm what yeah, was, like, a lot what of it? municipalities want uh, want the ability to have uh, to have control over 
their communities and generally as I said on CBC yeah as I said on CBC this morning I think that it's important um, I, I got into local government back in 2008 this is my 10 year anniversary this coming November actually in, in politics and one of the reasons why I left local government to run provincially uh, is because I didn't feel that the provincial government did a good enough job of giving uh, of, of giving decentralized policy to local governments to make decisions that affect local governments, uh, you know, and, and I think that we've got a broad, diverse province and we need to make sure that local governments are able to uh, respond and react to their situations as is needed. I'm gonna put this back down now. Uh, our, the, the camera, here. there's Andrew. Andrew, uh, Judy Feinstein wants the weekend off. Is that okay, your director you of operation? Uh, uh, oh, you know that I'm not, I'm calling no. in sick for the rally tomorrow. Yeah. So, so. Uh, yeah, you yeah. can have the weekend off. No, no, no. Judy wants, <laughs> wants the weekend, weekend off. off. Oh, I'm having the weekend off. Can Judy have the weekend can off? Can Judy have she, the weekend Judy's off? Judy works 24 seven, so she can have the weekend off. But Judy can have the weekend. But off. she won't have the weekend off because yeah, I know that's Judy. True. She won't have the weekend off. I'll, I'll, I'll be getting Judy. Take are the rest of the weekend off. Or 18 viewers? We're 15 now. We've this been we've been going up and down. You know, okay. it's like whatever. We we talk. As an elder once said to me, Adam, you speak to one like you speak to a hundred, so it doesn't matter. We could have one viewer. And uh, but this has been a pretty popular episode. People have been engaging. You're asking me a bunch of other stuff, and I got distracted. So no, so, so I had to Carolyn. Yeah, this is good. So anything else? We How long do you go on for? Because I'm I'm getting yeah. hungry on the ferry. Well, you here. can leave. Huh? Uh, well, oh, done. you need to lock the you yeah, need to lock so the car. What time is it? I don't We're know. Closing it on five. It's, it's oh, eight minutes. minutes. Eight minutes. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm just gonna open the window. Eight, eight more minutes. Yeah, I open the window because it's hot in here. It's, it's, it's it is. Sick. It is hot in here. So anything else, Richard, that you wanna you wanna talk about now that you've completely uh, now that you've completely given us the inside, you've scooped yourself on your new podcast. Yeah, Tell us about your podcast. Podcast. So we'll have a few episodes out when it's ready to go. And there's just a lot of stuff going on right now. We're about to get back to session. Yeah, we were talking the speculation. Terms. Oh, here's a here's a good question. Yeah. Someone asked me, Adam, I'm wondering if there's any progress with the Wild Salmon Advisory oh, Council. Yeah, this is an so. so this is one I'm quite excited about. We have, uh, we've worked all summer. Uh, it's a very, very diverse group of people, people with uh, very uh, diverse interests from uh, First Nations, uh, conservation, uh, the, the restoration community, people who've worked in, in hip waders in the creeks and streams, uh, restoring uh, habitat as well, uh, the sporties, commercial fisheries are, are in the room. Very diverse group of people and, uh, and I am, very happy with the uh, report that's coming, the options paper that's going to be coming to the legislature that that uh, we'll see uh, uh, that we'll see when the legislature resumes on October the first. It's going to be given to the uh, Agriculture, Food, and Fish Committee, which is another committee that I sit on. Uh, and uh, and once we uh, once it goes to there, there's going to be a province-wide consultation. Uh, we're going to take this paper out and and get the community and people in the communities. Uh, to let us know what they think of it. It's very comprehensive, a lot of work. We are well on our way uh, to a made in BC wild salmon policy. And as you know, uh, we've had lots of conversations over the last number of months as I've been banging away in the legislature and making sure people uh, have this front and center. And Normally, it is. You know, it is an issue that obviously is hugely important to Adam. You guys all know that. Uh, Premier Horgan has also expressed this as an important issue for him. And, and uh, you know, he told me recently he met with um, Minister Wilkinson, uh, who's yep. the new federal minister of fisheries. I think a huge um, moment to have a BC minister responsible for this now in the Trudeau government. That I think will make a profound difference. I think um, it's it's good to hear. I, you know, I've covered the legislature for a while now, and you can tell when it's obvious that uh, leaders are listening. So I think this is an issue that matters and. That makes a huge difference. It's not just a report that will end up in a desk somewhere. This is something I think the current the, the NDP takes pretty seriously as well. So well, I think that's all. That's all a good sign for the future of salmon in our province. Look, I mean, I think that. Uh, well, I know where this. I, I've know. I knew where this sat uh, with Premier Horgan uh, before raising it for the first time in the province. We ran into each other a number, a couple of years back, actually. I was out in Souk, out in his riding, and there was a, uh, a meeting of the, uh, of the Souk River um, salmon people there, uh, and, uh, and he was there, and we ran into each other. He was an MLA, 
I was just a dude that was interested in fish. So, um, oh, ask the man in the back to speak louder, please. I will. And thank I you. Promise. Oh, speak louder. Sorry about that. Anyway, notice how nobody ever asks me to speak louder. I'm. My name's anyway. Richard. Just so Richard you know. Zussman. Oh yeah, you know what I should do? Thank you for watching the 25th episode of the Public Circle Live. My name's Adam Olson. They knew that we already, are, though. We are. We're, we're on the ferry. <laughs> we're on the ferry. This is Richard Zussman. He's a global uh, TV reporter in the press gallery at the legislature. Caught a ride back from the UBCM. We're going to be signing off. This is Andrew Weaver. Andrew Weaver. He's our driver. Chauffeur um, today. Our chauffeur today. Uh, anyway, uh, I knew that this was near and dear to the premier's heart. We knew that it was uh, near and dear to the to, to many ministers and 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 many members of the uh, the NDP. Uh, who sit uh, in the benches next to us. So we continue to work on it. Uh, it's a big deal. And, um, and I'm really looking forward to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the community consultation. So keep your head up on this uh, in the coming weeks in the fall session. Yeah. What else is going to happen this fall oh, session? So loved the Zussman's book. Good. Thank you for that. I appreciate So uh, plug... So uh, I wrote a book. It's called A Matter of Confidence. What was it about? It stars Adam Olson and Andrew Weaver. Uh, I'd have you know what? I'm gonna openly complain. I didn't. There was no chapter like Olson or anything like that. You were in the book though. Yeah, Some people didn't book. even make the book. That's true. So, so maybe okay. I'm gonna withdraw. I'm gonna retract my my complaint. Thank you for adding me to the book. I was one of the three greens. I mean, it was like... It was an important part of the book. So the book spans from Gordon Campbell's right. last election through the HST, That's right. through the Christy Clark years, and through what was uh, an incredible year last year, uh, through the election uh, and the negotiations between these two guys and Sonia Furstenau and Liz Lilly and the Greens That's right. uh, with the other two major parties. And... Uh, a decision was made to support the NDP and the book goes right through until the first few days of Premier Horgan's time in office. So it's fun to write and it was, uh, I think, important because it's a hugely significant moment totally in BC important. political history. I think it's one, it's one, uh, it's, it's one in, in, in a book that I think will be used uh, in the future because this is the first minority government in BC in, since the 60s or in 60 years. Right. Um, so, so that doesn't happen very no, often. No, the first confidence vote. Yeah, right. So, yeah, since first minority Bennett. government. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and so it's going to be one for political science uh, classes in in across Canada probably. Uh, and uh, and so anyway, uh, your book will be well read. In fact, you were talking Where about. Where do it we being... get the book? Where you... do you yeah plug the book? So you can get it on the ferry. We're here on the ferry, and one lucky person... Not going to help most of you. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to sign one today up there that says, thanks for riding the ferry. The best right. piece of advice I got as an author was from fellow author Andrew Weaver, and it was that if you sign the books, they can't return them. So Sign as many as you can. Yeah, it was a good good piece of so advice you just go that up, authors... You just go up into the bookstore and just, just sign one. a book? I'll just sign one, yep. And I'll say, thanks for riding the ferry, Richard Zussman. And then that book will. Somebody worth, will get How it. much is it right now? Twenty two ninety nine. So, so that book will be worth at least twenty three ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Um, <laughs> so you can get the book. I, I think they have they have it at Tanner's in Sydney for sure. Yep. Um, oh, thank you for plugging Sydney. Yeah. They probably got it at the bookstore on Salt and, Spring and, yeah, and they on do Pender. For sure, they have it in Salt Spring. You were on. Salt I was Salt in Spring. Salt Spring as far yeah. as the Salt Spring Forum. <laughs> I I'm sure most of you know about the Salt Spring Forum, but what what a neat group of people and. Uh, so I was a, a part of I was yeah. a part of that. To, I got to speak to them. Uh, so the book's available. And it's also available online. If you're in Victoria, well, they, it's at Monroe's. They say they say look, uh, Amazon chapters and uh, my choice. Your local bookstore. Yeah, so I'll I just was say told this, not though. to plug the other. So local bookstores. I was just gonna say this, um, local bookstores, because then that means that you'll get a check that's more than zero dollars and zero cents. Yeah. No, Eventually. no, 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 no. The uh, actual sales are It's all sales the same. It doesn't same. matter. It doesn't Author matter. royalties are fixed. It was available at one point at Costco. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so... I, I was impressed So it's that. available it's, for the for those who ask. Somebody wanted to know if we were going to karaoke. Is this the car you did the, the karaoke yes, with it Tom is. Fletcher? Yes, it is. This is the... This so is the, Tom Fletcher from Black Press did a karaoke did with really? Andrew Weaver that you can did find Tom online. Did Tom sing? So search it's karaoke, Andrew Weaver, Tom Fletcher, if you want to see... 
the press gallery in the greens do some I, karaoke I together. I highly recommend today's, not doing Today's that. not the day for that. No, no, we are not. I no. It'd be awful. I I will lose respect. People will not. They will You'll lose, lose respect. yourself in the music, the moment. <laughs> okay, Eminem. All right. So, um, did we talk to Lillian Spack? I did lo- very briefly talk to Lillian Spack. Yes. At UBCM. At UBCM, I did. Oh. I also talked to, must be dozens, maybe hundreds of other <laughs> municipal councillors, and and many from uh, many from the capital region, including, uh, the 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 good uh, councillors from Sydney. North Saanich and Central Saanich, who I attended meetings with ministers. That's another thing that goes on at the uh, at the UBCM. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so this is this is our high tech. Uh, <laughs> this is our high tech. Um, we don't have a switcher <laughs> or a producer, really. So, so that's your karaoke. There's also Hawaii shirts. Tell them we're going to watch it on the road time. Yeah, yeah. 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 This time. is not. How does he get his constituents? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it, oh, Sarah Petr- Petrusky is on here. Uh, we got the media joining Hi, us now. Your, your name attracted a lot of... Uh, Anyway, this is Richard Zisman. That's Andrew Weaver. You've been watching the 25th. Sure you missed some comments. Make okay, sure okay, going okay, to answer okay. before we say goodbye. Okay, Shelly Falk, Keep she agrees, up. no karaoke. Sorry, Shelly. Um, uh, Tanya Sunshine, my M I L. My M I L. Not sure what that means. By chance, budding. What's budding? Um, <laughs> Bryce yeah, wants some... to say thanks. Uh, Local library, love local libraries, yeah, but doesn't help sell books. Of, no, it's fine. That's oh, one of the coolest things. You do, things. you get in Canada, yeah. And when we went to the Vancouver Library, Rob, I wrote it with Rob Shaw from the Vancouver Sun. Yeah, we Sun. didn't even plug Rob Shaw at all. And right? all He's with the Vancouver Sun. At UBCM, Sun. they kept asking me, they look at me and they go, Where, where's Rob? So I guess people do miss Rob. Um, Mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. It, was, it was amazing that there were uh, 135 copies on hold. Uh, so yeah, it's the library as well is a great place to get it. So my M I L mother in law. So uh, Tanya, um, I, well, say hi to your mother in law uh, from all three of us. And you um, were saying sorry. We just saw my mother in law. We picked up we some did. shoes. Actually, from her. we saw like I, I am <laughs> basically the cab driver today. Yeah. I got to take his yeah. Richard to uh, cab Tzla- driver. You're our Uber driver. I'm the Uber driver. I, this would um, be amazing. Well, hold on a second here. I could have been able to take an Uber on this. Hold on a second here. There's only four enforcement officers. Right. We don't want them to draw them yeah, their, yeah, the illegal their attention to <laughs> this illegal ride hailing service. Brought to you by your. Your, uh, your, the leader of the, <laughs> the third party. Um, yeah, do we have all. anything I, I else? Do we have? Oh no, that's uh, I'm Christine hungry. Hunt. Thank you very much, Christine, for uh, for watching today. And uh, now, now people are just laughing at us. Um, we are very, very happy to uh, hang out with you on Friday afternoons. Every Friday afternoon at four thirty, I'm here. I do something called the Public Circle Live. This episode is a special episode. And I've got Richard Zisman. I've got Andrew Weaver. I got two guests. He's special. This is the first time that I've only ever had two guests, uh, and, and the first and, time you've done it in a car, and the first time you've done it from a ferry. And we didn't do karaoke. <laughs> and it's the first time that anybody's watched. So, <laughs> so I'm actually really excited about that. But we do it. We do it, taking us right back to the very beginning. We do it because of accessibility, of transparency. I want to talk about the issues that have been going on this week. We've been in Whistler. Uh, and starting on October 1st, we're going to be back in the legislature talking about some very, very serious issues. There are many of them. You can reach out to my office through my email at adam.olson.mla at ledge.bc.ca. You can call us at 250-655-5600. Find me online at adamolson.ca. You can ask all your questions there. Please do reach out to my office if, if we can uh, help you in any way. We will. Um, anything else you guys want to say before we go upstairs and eat some food? Have a great uh, weekend. Thank you for oh. joining in. Yeah, thank you for joining it's in. And, and join us next week. And people actually thought we did great work today. So that's going. fantastic. I'll tell, you know what? I'll tell my bosses. Tell your <laughs> Absolutely. Breaking news. Um, I find out that it happens a lot actually hanging out with Richard. <laughs> There's lots of breaking news. Anyway, thank you very much uh, for watching. And until next time, as I always say, Hi, Aqua.